Hi, everybody, and welcome to Conscious Talk TV, and I'm your host, Linda Summers, and these shows are all about providing information to bring awareness to humanity and truth. And today's topic is Cycles of the Phoenix with Guyana Ravenlinks. And so with that, I'd like to welcome Guyana to the show. Hi, Guyana. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks. So, and welcome everybody to the show, everybody that's tuning in, we appreciate you, and yes, thank you so much, let me just get in here, okay, so, well, we're going to begin with your story, your personal story, so how you arrived to this most awesome place, guys, let me tell you, hi Sharon, hi Elfie, hi uh, Jill, there is so much about Guyana that like wow she's she's a real oh and she's a divine servant I didn't say that so she's a divine servant so she's she has a lot of beautiful gifts and um, we're gonna be doing more than one show I can tell you that for sure so <laughs> so let's start with your personal story and how you arrived here so people have an idea of um, like where you had to go in order to get here because the title of the show um, cycles of the Phoenix, which we all know about, well, we don't all know, but, you know, most people know about the Phoenix rising. So, um, and we're at such a perfect time for this because of yes. this is setting and everything that's going on. So this couldn't have been such a, you know, a, just a really, um, perfect time to show, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Ah, let's see where to begin. Um, well, I had a, a very interesting life right from the beginning. There were a lot of traumas that I'm not really going to get into right now, but early on, I learned how to deal with things that knocked me down and get back up. It took me a while to understand that that was what a Phoenix cycle is. Um, but, um, <clears throat> Um, anyway, more recently, I guess the, is, um, I had a heart condition that, uh, was diagnosed that my sister had as well, and it killed her at 19. So they gave me a 5% chance to live for six months and said, from that point on, it was just going to get worse. Uh, so I fired my doctors <laughs> and said, I'm yeah. going to comply with that order. So... I started to do my own work and I started to address my heart and do things that helped it. Um, and that was how I learned to start talking to my body that way, which was what helped me to later be able to do that for other people. Mm -hmm. no, but <laughs> Sorry, we had a cat. Aww, she wants to join. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> she can join in here too. <laughs> we welcome everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you might have some things to say. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, um, in that sense, I really did rise basically from the dead. They said that I was a goner. And um, that was some of the best medical minds around that concurred on that. So, and now it is almost five and a half years after that prognosis. And I'm still here and better than wow. ever. So, wow. you know, and in my earlier life, I dealt with some really, really severe abuse. I had seven years of my ex mm -hmm. trying to kill me and chasing me and my children. So we spent seven years just mm -hmm. on the run, have to pick up, pack up, leave. And uh, it was, it was a lot, <laughs> as you can. Yeah, I'll say. But yeah. Um, I learned a lot about my own resilience at that point. And um, in the course of the years after that, I also learned how to take all of those things and repair them in my brain because I was, they said I had complex PTSD. And so there were a lot of triggers. There were all sorts of things. And, um, you know, just be something would just set me off and I would be freaked out, and you know, like a rabbit. So anyway... <laughs> My life has been full of a lot of things like that. 
And for a while, I didn't understand why, you know, I just was like, what is going on? Why me? Mm -hmm. uh, and if all I were right. to lay it all out, people wouldn't even believe the story because it was like, how can that many things happen to one person? Um, but I understand much more now because in order for me to help other people, I had to understand what they were going through. Mm -hmm. And uh, so <clears throat> all of those experiences gave me the understanding of it. And in my journey to heal myself, I learned how to do that for other people as well. Going back to those points of trauma, I can look at them as an observer, step outside of them and say, okay, I have this experience, I see it, I understand what the feeling is, but it's no longer a part of something that disrupts my life. Right. So that was how I started to learn about Phoenix Cycles. How did you, when you were going through all that, I mean, you know, all the trauma, because I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. When you're going through all that, how do you, like, what did you do? Um, did you, you know, step back or did you have other people around you that, you know, that could tell you, oh, this is what you do? I mean, did you have to figure it out on your own? Like, what did you do to come to that um, awakening, so to speak? For a long time, it was just me. Um, my sister died, as I said, whenever she was 19, and she was kind of my person. So after that, it was just me and my kids who were really little at the time. So I had actually met Kali when I was much younger um, because I had been in a really bad situation. I said, help me, help me, somebody, and that was who showed up for me. Um, and so through the course of that and through meditation and talking to her, that was how I started to understand. For a while, I was just like a rabbit running, <laughs> just trying to stay alive. Yeah. So, but after I had a chance to step back and look at everything and say, all right, I don't want to feel this way anymore. I don't want to be scared and running and, you know, just basically mm -hmm. like animal instinct all the time. And so... Yeah. In the course of that, it was very hard on my children, too, because for a long time, I was just completely defense. I didn't really have a lot of nurturing mm -hmm. ability because all of my energy was going toward keeping us alive. And so mm -hmm. in later times, understanding the damage that that did to them and um, trying to help them to recover from that, which is still an ongoing process. But um, yeah you know, learning that way and saying, okay, I don't want this to be what my life is. That was what started me in working toward this. And then, so you were reaching out. Yeah. Yeah. Who is Kali? Is that, is that now, is that an angelic being? Or is that just um, a, a friend? She's a goddess. Well, it could be. Okay. Yeah, she's a Hindu wow. goddess. Um, and she's very yeah. closely associated with Beautiful. what we would consider Phoenix cycles because she is about death and rebirth. So mm. she is um, really <laughs> an important figure to me. Yeah, absolutely. Because I know we talked um, before the show, you know, we were talking yesterday and you were talking about wounds. Because I do want to go back to, um, at some point I want to go back to also how you were able to, um, you know, cause you had that 5% chance of living and here you are five years later, mm -hmm. you know, firing your doctors and taking your authority, you know, back, right. Like, you yeah. know, best your body. Right. But, right. um, yeah. Um, I totally lost the question because <laughs> I was just answering, I'm just talking, um, Oh, so we were talking about, so about the wounds, how you had, you know, how you were at that point of um, going through what you were going through. And at some point we ended up just kind of, we kind of just sit there and we go, Hey, what can I do? You know, like reaching out to ask for help. And did you ever expect, I mean, was there, was it, a, you know, like what, what was the sense that when that happened for you, that she showed up, I mean, were you, welcoming with that or you know were you like because oh, you know yeah. some people would be like oh my gosh what is happening here because they're not used to that right it's just something right. that's different but for me i met her when i was just a child um because mm. even as a child i i my grandfather had molested me and during that time mm. 
I was going, God help me, God help me. And that is who was the face of the divine for me. Um, And so she was the one that showed up and helped me to get through that. Mm. And so thereafter, she was always the one that showed up. And after a while, there were more, you know, I mean, I I have a a pretty good team of guides at this point from all over Mm. the place. So... Wow, that's so amazing. It's so beautiful. And so you really, for that you've been really in tuned and touched with the angelic realm and with, you know, divine beings from a very, very young age. So you were well aware of it then, which yeah. is great. So it was no surprise. Yeah. Right. I was always very aware. Even as a little child, I could see things that everybody else didn't see. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. um, when I was little, I had a whole collection of imaginary friends who, come to find out later, were really not imaginary. <laughs> Those were right. my friends. I just, you know, when you're a kid and they tell you these things aren't real, then that's what you believe. Right. Uh, now, Absolutely. at this point in my life, I know who they are. Yeah. Yeah. So, going back to your sister, um, and I'm sorry to hear about your sister, too. Thank you. Uh, as we know that we know that there's no death and um, that oh, everybody yeah. really is eternal. But <laughs> yeah, how amazing! She, I'm sure she's still with you and just you know, yeah, guiding you as well for sure. You hit that ascension, it'll be just amazing to be able to be with everyone. You know, all of our yeah, yeah, for sure. So what did you do when you were given that chance? You were just like, nope, no way. Um, forget it. You guys are out of here. I'm going to, I'm going to figure this out myself. I'm going to, you, so you took charge. What did you do to make that happen to um, be able to, you were said you were talking to yourself, you know, and talking to yourselves. Um, well, first I decided I wasn't going to die. <laughs> so, mm. I decided that that wasn't going to be me. And um, I decided also not to allow them to do any of the interventions that they wanted to because everything they wanted to do was very invasive. And I had read all the studies. Um, I was going to be a medical doctor before everything else happened. And so I had some medical training prior to that. And so I started to read all the studies and look at what was happening with people and all the interventions they were using were expediting the illness. And um, I said, why would you do that? That doesn't make any sense. And so, no, I'm not going to participate. So that was the first thing I did. The second thing I did was do some research and find out what things I could do. Um, A lot of amino acids are helpful for rebuilding cardiac cells. So I started to do that. And I started going to drumming circles a lot more because the drums would affect my heart Mm. and the energy of the drum circle Mm. really, really affected my heart. Um, And I was really fortunate to have some drummer friends who would play for me when I wasn't feeling well. And so I always told them that that helped my heart remember how to beat properly. Um, And then I, I started to really, even while I was in the hospital, I would watch the monitor And I would breathe through it. Well, before I even went to the hospital, before everything happened, I would be having bad arrhythmias. And I just eventually learned to breathe through them. I would just breathe and say, calm down. Everything's okay. Nothing's wrong. (laughs) And um, the doctors told me that was not possible. But then I sat there on a monitor. They came in with a crash cart because my rhythms were so bad. And I said, wait a minute, I'm awake, so please don't hit me with those paddles. And um, yeah. I breathed my way through it. The VTAC went away, and um, they said, we don't know how you did that. And I said, well, I do. I just talked to my heart and said, stop that. <laughs> this isn't how we beat. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I, I came at it from a lot of different angles and um, started to also pay attention to what things would set it off, which was what led me to understand over a course of time that part of, well, actually the reason that this is a problem is because our family has had so many generations of heartbreak and that manifests mm. as heart problems mm. because the energetic signature of that is, A, you know, not great. 
So yeah. um, through understanding that, then I started to get that if I went back and repaired the places that I had had heartbreak, and then, you know, even going back into my ancestral line and doing that, mm. it would help, and it has. So, yeah. you know, I can still have some pretty crazy rhythms, but I always come out of them. And now yeah. I know a lot more what to do for them. Yeah. So, and usually yeah, and didn't you say up, too? Hmm? Go ahead, sorry. Oh, it's okay. No, and usually sorry. when it comes up, it's a result of some kind of emotional charge, you know, something that I need to deal with. It's like, hey, pay attention to this. So it's sort of like a, a warning system that says, hey, there's something out of whack with your energy. Pay attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And didn't you say, too, that you were, um, which I thought was really awesome as well, is like knowing what the anatomy of the heart looked like and mm, you know, yeah. the, how it just is and things like that was really important in envisioning yeah. that. Thank you. I've forgotten about that part. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. In, in my medical studies, I had done some pretty intense anatomy and physiology courses. And so that gave mm -hmm. me the ability to know what is the heart supposed to look like. And from there, I pursued it further and looked at different scans and different things to understand. How does this work? Where's the electrical signal getting disrupted? What do we do about that? And uh, they told me that it was impossible to change these things. There are a lot of things they said were impossible. Um, yeah. But through yeah. the course that I was using, I was able to change some of the pathways that were problematic and convince those cells to replace themselves. The course of this illness is um, that your heart will replace regular cardiac cells with scar tissue. And then that disrupts the electrical mm. signal in your heart, and then you get bad rhythms. And um, so by replacing those scar tissue pieces with cardiac tissue again, you stop mm. that from happening and then you stop the progression of it. So um, in knowing what I knew about anatomy and physiology, I was able to do that because I can focus in on that and know what should it look like? What does it look like? Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. you know, move it from what it looks like to what it needs to look like. Yeah. Did you go to medical school because of that situation? Is that why you started out going to medical school? No, I just wanted to be a doctor. <laughs> wow. So, and it, it was way what before. What great training. Yeah. It was, um, I ended up actually leaving school because of my sister's death. Because that had come like in the middle of a whole bunch of other things. And um, at the time I was really upset about that. But now I, I understand that that was exactly the way that that needed to go. I needed not yeah. to be in medical school because they teach people to think only one way. You know, you've got to yeah. follow the textbook. You've got to do what you're told. No way to think outside the box. No way to develop new anything because you're supposed to do exactly this. And if you don't, then you get kicked out. Mm -hmm. Well, it's so fascinating that you had the medical background. So you had all that, right? That mm -hmm. kind of helped you in the situation. And then where does the spirituality come in? Like, where did you... Um, you know, there's something, well, I shouldn't say something, but where did the spirituality come in for you? For me, it was always interwoven. And I started to understand mm. all the synchronicities that led to everything else and then pay attention to them. And so whenever yeah. I would be thinking about a new way to work with my heart, I would say, well, you know, I'm really open to ideas from whomever. And so there would yeah. be new ways that I could view it because I was open to listening. Even though at that time I didn't really yeah. know most of my guides, I was aware that somebody mm -hmm. was out there. Mm -hmm. So I love that. Yeah. So you, I know when we talked yesterday, there's so many aspects of you that, you know, that you really the shamanism and just you, there's so many beautiful things that you all these tools that you have um to assist you know other people in right yeah. so how did all of that come into play like when you decided you wanted to do all that like was there something that you know 
and you're asking, so that was that one of the things that came in? Like, God, this feels really good. Or was it something, you know, how sometimes it's within yourself. You're like, oh, gosh, I have this drawn to something, you know, to that. To that. Um, <clears throat> for me, it was always just an organic kind of journey. Things just happened the right way, and I followed along mm. with them. So it wasn't even really too much about my choices as it was that I was willing to go with the flow of what was happening. And, um, you know, I'd learned that actually through those years of running from my ex, I had to be able to be flexible and to work with whatever was happening right in front of me right then. There was no way to plan. Um, There was no way to know anything because if he found us, we had maybe a day to pack up whatever was important and get out and find a place to be. So... I learned through that to be very flexible and um, to pay attention to what doorways opened for me. And so that translated into paying attention to what was happening. And I had always really wanted to help other people. Like that was always, even when I was little, that was really my goal. So all of it just kind of evolved that way and uh, brought me to where I am. Yeah. You know what I love is what you had, you know, the, was going through this, the, the running, which is so opposite. Right. And so it's, it's, it, you know, cause we go through all these, you know, things in our life and we're trying to, you know, uh, not go with the flow, you know? And so what you yeah. did was you actually learned through those that through that part of your life to just be the flexible, have the flexibility, which it translated to the of being able to go to the flow. That's pretty, that's really powerful. That's huge. Yeah. And I found that yeah. the case, even when I'm in the middle of a situation, it's harder to recognize, of course. Um, yeah. But I always find that what I learn in a crisis situation is always something that helps me. Um, it teaches me new skills or it teaches me new ways to be um, understanding of other people. And then when I'm talking to somebody else, I can think about what was this like for me? What did I feel? What would have helped me when I was in that situation? And by being able to access all of that, I'm a lot more able to relate to someone and to think of different ways to approach something. So it's not just like Mm -hmm. one method it's whatever works at that time with that person. So flexibility. Yeah. And you were saying something yesterday too, about um, that going through like people to go through this. So you went through this so you can help other people through this, mm-hmm. you know, to be able to um, help with the wounds. So you, you felt that that was something that, why this was all an experience for you. Cause we know, you know, we know that we're experiencing certain things so we can help others and teach stuff, but yeah. Yeah. And especially at this point in my life, I have really begun to understand that I did actually choose <laughs> that. That was a really hard concept for me because when people would, yeah. used to say to me, yeah. Oh, well, you've chosen yeah. that I would be mad. I would be angry. I'd be like, why yeah. would anybody yeah. ever choose this crap? Exactly. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a like the heck no. <laughs> but now I do. I understand. You know, I'm like, okay, I was not conscious yeah. of it, but I couldn't be conscious of it in the middle of it. If I was conscious of that, whenever this was happening, I would not have been able to relate because I would have been like, oh, I can't take this seriously because I know it's just you know a thing that's going to happen and whatever. If I didn't authentically experience what I experienced. I would never have gotten the information I needed and the ability to assist. <laughs> yeah. Velvet. Uh, what's the cat's name? Velvet. <laughs> so we have a velvet. Oh, so we have velvet. Uh, hey, everybody that's joining us just recently. <laughs> oh, we have velvet joining us. Cast. It's her cat. <laughs> yes, yeah, special cat. So I'm sure the cat is there. Um, probably the energy and probably, oh. like you said, has something to share. Yeah, she always does. Does the cat ha- does Velvet have anything to share? 
Oh, she's in your food now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, she does. Let us, you know, you can always, you know, let us know because we, you know, it's, that's, uh, I think when that they come in, you know, it's, there's always like a message or something there, right? Yeah. That just, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you, you oh, deal yeah. with the whole, you know, yeah. <laughs> Cat uh, family. <laughs> oh, yes. <sighs> Yes. yes. Yeah. We talked about that too. I don't know if you want to share any of that of what you all, what all you do um, before we go into the wounds. Cause there's things I want to ask you about um, which ties into the wounds is the rewiring you had mentioned about rewiring. Yes. So that's going to be an important aspect. Um, and also uh, you mentioned PTSD, which is a huge, well, I don't want to say that. Okay. But it exists out there. And of course, you know, that we're it's on a 4d level, but, um, oh, let's talk about that too. Um, as far as how you were saying dipping down in, like we, we're going to be dipping, you know, dip people that have gone through or dipping in. Let's, let's talk about that too. But do you want to share the, the different aspects of you that kind of encompasses, um, you know, all of who, well, you're more than always that, but you know, uh, do you want to share that? Let's wait on that. Okay. Okay. So, um, so let's go into, I have so many questions written down here. I'm like, okay, where are we <laughs> uh, I already have that one. Uh, let's see. I already asked you that one. Okay. Um, so let's, let's go into the wounds. So okay. since you were best to, you know, uh, having experience and, you know, and it's what's so wonderful too is that, I'm sure there's people that, you know, that are awakening that maybe have already awakened that experience a lot of things and they don't know why, you know, because we talked about that yesterday too, that um, there's so much going on now. There's so much of an awakening. So do you want to talk about that and, and then kind of lead us into the, with the wounds and how you uh, work with that? Yeah, right now, particularly um, what I'm seeing is all of this energy is forcing people's wounds to the surface, especially as people start to mm -hmm. awaken. Um, yeah. Things that they thought were buried and gone are coming up and, you know, they don't know what to do with it because suddenly, bam, there it is. And you've got all the emotions attached to that and everything else. And so, mm -hmm. but it's being done for a purpose. We can't ascend with all of that heaviness, with all that weight on us. We're anchored down here so we have to contend mm -hmm. with those things before we can arise and for some people it's not as hard some people can just go oh, okay I'm done um, but for people who maybe have had more trauma it's not quite that easy in a lot of cases so right. um, these things are coming up for a lot of people and um, lost my train of thought there <laughs> Hmm. Well, you know what? So let's let's kind of reach. Let's so because this is going to tie into because we were talking about the wounds and how you were saying how a lot of people with the awakening that a lot of stuff is coming up and we can't go into you know ascend with this heavier stuff, right? Right. Yeah. We, yeah. So these things are coming up for people, but especially if they're really early in this process. Well, you know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. all through this process it can be confusing and difficult because i know i go through the same thing periodically um yeah you know we go layers and layers that we work through until we really really get to the root of it and for a lot of us that's in childhood yeah. so you know yeah. um so many people have been raised without a lot of close parental involvement because everybody's parents have to work two mm -hmm. jobs so Right from childhood, we don't have the foundation to work with. And then when trauma happens, we don't have a good place to work at that from, we're not really taught the right skills. So whenever awakening yeah. happens and it's like, okay, I've buried this under so many layers just to try and quiet it, then suddenly it's all back. And, uh, you know, I, I've seen a lot of people who are really, you know, like that's happening with them. And they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's an area that I'm able to help a lot of people with. So 
isn't it amazing how people we kind of stuff things under? I mean, I've done that in my life mm -hmm. way, way, way back when. It's like stuff it under. Oh, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, that's all good. You know, <laughs> we just keep shoving it on the rug, and then one day it's like it surfaces, and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, I thought I was done with that. Great. Right. I'm sure you find a lot of that too. You know, that we it's thought we were over something, and we really. Yeah. And to me, it, it, I started to understand that from a medical point of view before I understood the spiritual aspects of it, because if you have, say, a splinter. And you just kind of clean up the surface of it and put a bandage over it. It might heal over that splinter, but the splinter is still there. And it will either work yeah. its way deeper and cause problems, or it will eventually one day create yeah. this big mess that is far worse than the original problem. Because we don't know how to take those things out generally. Um, yeah. So it sits there and festers. And that's the same thing that traumas do energetically emotionally otherwise um they sit there and they fester until one day something uncovers them and boy then it's a mess yes what a great analogy like that's a really good analogy Thank you. yeah so what do you do when you help people um you had mentioned rewiring yeah so how do you do your work yeah um i have a lot of different approaches depending on the person and yeah. what makes sense to them. But um, usually at first I just talk or listen more than yeah. talk really. And a lot of times when people start to talk about it and they have someone to listen to them that isn't going to judge them, and isn't going to, um, you know, in any way talk down to them or anything else, they come to their own conclusions. Um, just being mm -hmm. there and being present for them in some cases is enough. Um, and I mean, ultimately that's the goal is for people to find how to heal themselves. I just kind of, um, the conduit for that. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. then once they can do that, they can go on to help other people. And that's kind of how we, how, how we do better is to teach people how to deal with trauma and then they go on to help other mm -hmm. people in their lives. And then, you know, eventually yeah. there are so many of us doing this that we all are healed. Yeah. Um, but in working mm -hmm. with people with more significant trauma, or maybe not significant, that's not the right word, um, more substantial trauma, um, then sometimes it's their, their brain is rewired by PTSD. Um, because uh, I guess it's probably useful to explain the mechanism of PTSD from a physiological point of view. Whenever a trauma happens, this used to be a survival instinct whenever we were not at this level of civilization, um, something bad would happen, your brain would create a quick circuit from stimulus to response. Here's a bear, run. <laughs> uh, because it would yeah. be <laughs> yeah. But now, whenever something traumatic happens, we create that quick response and uh, it ends up causing us so much grief because it, it's not appropriate to the situation. Um, so for people with PTSD, instead of having stimulus, think about it and figure out what to do and then response, there's just straight from stimulus to response. So that's why with veterans, for instance, when there are fireworks, they don't stop to think about whether are these fireworks, is this a car backfiring? Well, of course, because they've been in situations where their life's at risk. Yeah. So if they don't respond immediately, they, they're in peril. Um, but to unwire that, you have to kind of go back to the original trauma that wired it and step outside and say, okay, I'm here I'm witnessing this event, but I'm no longer experiencing the emotional trauma of it. I'm able to step outside and go, what's the response I want to have? Um, and I mean, it, it's more complicated than that and sometimes it takes a lot of going back mm -hmm. over because those grooves get worn in there pretty, pretty deep um, but yeah. also it depends on where somebody is in their spiritual growth because if they've done a lot of work then it might be a little easier for them um, let's see but uh, there are a lot of different ways to approach that. It just really depends on the person because 
one person will respond yeah. to, to one approach and another one will respond to another. So, you know, a lot of it is talking to the person and understanding the way that they think about things and maybe helping them find a different way to think about it, you know, mm -hmm. or a way to recognize when something like this is happening so they can take that moment and work on rewiring it. Like, um, yeah. if they can maintain calm in the face of a trigger, then they can rewrite that, you know, and sometimes you can even, um, it's sort of like desensitization therapy that they use, like, yeah. with spiders. Like, if you're afraid of spiders, well, you spend some time getting closer and closer to one until yeah. like, you're not impressed by it anymore, yeah. <laughs> which was a thing I had to do yeah. myself, so it's a, <laughs> a pertinent example. Um, you know, so, like, if you can produce a different reaction to that stimulus, then you're on your way to rewiring it. Yeah. So, and then energetically... Wait, is it? Is it... Oh, sorry. Oh, it's okay. No, go ahead and finish, because I know you hit something that you have to say. Oh, it's yeah. okay. Um, yeah, and then energetically, while I'm talking to them and working with them, I'm looking at their energy and seeing... You know, where are the places that it's cloudy or, you know, there's something that I can work on. So, and while they're talking about it, that area is going to be lit up anyway, and I can look at it. Um. And um, I can see what I can do to remove what's blocking them. So, I'm coming at it from a lot of different approaches, physiologically, energetically, emotionally. Um so, and that's why it also ends up being such an individual process because you have to kind of flow with what's going to work for that person. Mm -hmm. So, but by doing that, so you I can go ahead. No, 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 <laughs> sorry, it's okay. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, but yeah, by doing that, I have disabled a lot of my own triggers, and so I continue to do that with any that I find still there. Um, you know, I, I go, okay, this is what's happening. How do I address this? I just, I'm just make sure you were finished. I didn't want to get to reject okay. it or interrupt you. <laughs> it's okay. but, I mean, I think that's amazing. Yeah. That you can actually see, you know, like what the, what the wiring is going on. Like that's so, that's so cool. Like you can actually see that. And just by looking at them, they don't know what you're doing, but you're seeing as they're talking. So I think that's, you know, yeah. amazing. Would you um, relate that uh, sort of to, is it any in relationship to NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming? Yeah, they're definitely related. And um, the correlation. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times I don't even know in, in whenever I'm working with somebody what I'm going to be doing because I get guidance mm. that comes in. So I might set off thinking, okay, well, I think maybe this is the right approach. And then it's like, do this, <laughs> you know? And uh, at this point, I don't even know anymore which guide is saying what I just follow. Um, so, yeah. and that makes it much easier too, because I can think about things and I can make a plan, but um, it's much easier if I'm, listening to higher guidance for those kind of things because they definitely know more yeah oh yeah well you know <laughs> and they're bringing it from such a uh yeah huge vast of you know uh knowledge and wisdom than our brains could even you know yeah wrap our brains around you know that we even know so right. yeah yeah yeah, that's so cool. I love that. Um, I have a question, but I can't read my writing because I was writing so fast. Um, <laughs> one of the questions I had, um, like wounds from ancestors. So that's, you know, I don't think we really think about that. Um, yeah. That, you know, that we have picked that up and that we carry that. You want to speak a little bit more on that? Because I think that's really yeah. fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's really important right now because in this lifetime, it seems that a lot of people, if not everyone, are not only clearing their own 
trauma and wounds and everything, but you've got people who are clearing their ancestral lines, and then you've got people who are clearing for the collective as well. So you've got right. everybody's past lives, their ancestral traumas, and I mean, it's been shown in science now that we inherit those things from our ancestors. So in a physiological sense, all of those things are passed down to us. Um, so that's part of why people are going, what is going on when all this stuff hits them? Because it might not even be to do with anything that happened in their lifetime. They may be experiencing something from their ancestors or from a past life, you know, and for some people, you know, there's the experience of the collective that is on top of that. I know sometimes whenever I'm working on my own personal stuff, I'm also feeling like it's so much heavier than just what I have going on. And like, what is that? But it's everybody else's <laughs> pain um, that they don't yeah. know how to address. So, you know, we're right now clearing all those kind of things. And, you know, we've come to this particular point in time and that's what's going on. And it's like all of it, all of it has to stop here. So... Yeah. How do you decipher between the two, though? How would one decipher that? Sometimes I am not even sure where one ends and one begins. But usually, if you are, are dealing with something and you're like, why is this so much more? Um, you know, like mm -hmm. my, my feelings are so much more intense than whatever it was that happened. Um, you know, this is out of proportion to what I think it's about then it's time to look deeper and say okay what am I doing here you know maybe you need to consult your ancestors and say hey you guys want to help me out with this or you know can you help yeah. me to understand where this is coming from and I mean in my family my mom's side has an extensive history of everybody has told stories all the way down so we know a lot of our ancestry on that side and what's happened and yeah. Um, so that was helpful to me because that actually helped me to start understanding why um, some of these things were coming down to me, you know, and even just in the past few generations, I can see where my mother hasn't been able to clear her own trauma. And so that got passed on to me. And um, because I've started to clear some of mine, she seems to be changing as well. And it's been really fascinating wow. to see that happen. Um, like before, yeah. I don't think she could address any of it. And then in the course of me clearing and, you know, looking back at all of this, it seems like she has gotten lighter and she's not a, a really, uh, spiritual person. She's a religious person. Yeah, that was my next person. <laughs> ah, ah, yeah. That was my next question. So has you, has you have you had the support from your parents? <laughs> no. Through this. <laughs> no, no. Like, mom, can I work on you and help in releasing those traumas? And you're just, so she's like, no. no. <laughs> this is definitely not a thing that my folks are, are at this point in time able to understand. Yeah. So, uh, although it's strangely, the more that I grow and develop, the closer we come in philosophies because I'm like, hey, you know, um, in my earlier life, I was the, the pagan, you know, of the family, <laughs> the definite black sheep. And I, I still am, certainly. But, um, yeah. but uh, you know, we've come a lot closer in philosophies at this point because I'm like, my understanding of the world has expanded so far that I'm like, there isn't, you know, no one of those approaches is the right one. It's all, everybody's got a piece of the truth to bring together. Yeah. So just like if we were yeah. outside looking at the night sky, and even if we were standing right next to each other, our vision of that would be yeah. different because we're, we're seeing different sections of it. So if we put all those pieces together, then we've got a whole picture. But it's whenever everybody's yeah. like, this is my piece and it's the right piece and your piece is wrong, <laughs> that there's a problem. Yeah. So, you know, like maybe someday I can get my folks to sit down and, you know, we can put our pieces together and understand. I love it. <laughs> hey velvet <laughs> <laughs> i love it just not a care in the world <laughs> so awesome 
Yeah, she's just curious. Yeah, yeah. Wants to be in the energy for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she does. Yeah. Yeah. My parents too. My pet, my father's not, well, he's passed, but um, the same thing. My family is, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, you know, one of those things. My mom, you know, you try to, but um, there's just, you know, you just keep being who we are, right? And I, I, I agree, it does affect all those around us for sure. Yeah. And I do think as we clear things, yeah. they're, they're feeling more lightness and so they're maybe able to more closely address their own things yeah so in yeah. reverse we're clearing our you know <laughs> we're retro we're actually clearing for them too yeah so and um i i think that as we get more into that and as we learn more about doing that for our ancestral lines and everything else we're going to start to see things disappear because mm -hmm. as we go back and clear them and especially if we go back to that point in time and clear them, which is what I do with some people, as I take them back to that point in their history and we look at it and we stand there together and observe it, I'm thinking mm -hmm. that we're going to start seeing things disappear, whereas one time, you know, this person is affected and then afterwards it's like, this is different, this is not the same, and I've kind of seen that happen in some places. So, yeah. you know, it's something I, I'm really interested to get more into and understand more, because if we can do that, if we can clear those traumas, we change everything from there forward. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I was just going to say with the Ascension, too, um, you know, do you feel like for your mission, because there are so many awakenings, you know, and of course we want to, you know, awaken as many people as we can. So. And what we talked about yesterday with the earth, with the uh, Gaia ascending, we are a part of that. So things that no longer surface anymore are surfacing to the surface to where we're like, OK, we have no other choice than to look at it. But, you know, if we don't really know or we're just like that's so painful because there are some things that come up that are very painful. That's why we did shove them under the carpet, you know. And so, um, you know, what are your thoughts on that with, you know, with just this whole you know, because ascension, you know, going into a higher uh, dimension, you know, of course, we can't, like you said earlier, we can't have it with the heaviness. But so do you feel that your mission really is to in helping people um, that are awakening and the ones that are that have already awakened that are going through certain things that you can help them to uh, heal that? Yeah. So they can ascend. Yeah, I do. I think yeah. that helping them to figure out how to address it because I can help them and I can show them and I can give them all sorts of tools, but they still have to be the one to address it. Um, you know what I mean? I can clear for them. I can do all kinds of things to facilitate that, but they've got to be the one to yeah. do the work. Um, yeah. So, but by making it easier for them to address it, then that clears the way for them to do that and to be able to resolve it. And then they move higher. Although lately it's kind of like all over the place. I, I meet some people who are only just awakening. And um, for them, it seems like I'm more of a catalyst. I, I help them to awaken, sometimes not so gently. <laughs> but. <laughs> oh. but I'm not really yeah. in charge of that process. It just happens naturally. So. Um, but uh, I just kind of do whatever's put in front of me. I don't, you know, it's, yeah. it's so so broad of a, a thing. Just whomever's there, I help them with what I can help them with. Yeah. Do you think that, or have you found that when, um, you know, when you're bringing up a certain trauma and you put a different perspective on it. Like you have them see it for what it really is. Cause you know, our minds go, Ooh, you know, we expand so far out and we're just like, Oh my gosh, we make it so much bigger than it really is. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying about the splinter, right? Mm -hmm. So do you find that they, their perception shifts and then they can see it to heal it in that, you know, at that time? Well, yeah, maybe not some, exactly at that time, but some can and some, it takes a while. You know, um, it depends on how willing they are 
to really face it down and deal with it. A lot of people want to kind of like halfway deal with it and then try and put it back under the rug. (laughs) So, and that doesn't work out. You end up with the same kind of thing happening again. Um, So, you know, some people are ready to address those things. Some people will take another go round, you know, and I mean, it also is, it's about layers because you can think that you've cleared something completely and then, you know, yes. like, whew, I'm yes. done with that. And then, <laughs> yeah. you know, nope. um, suddenly it's back and you're yeah. like, what the heck? Um, because that yeah. has happened to me for sure. <laughs> that continues yeah, to happen to me sometimes. Yeah. So, you know, and I mean, that can get frustrating. People will feel like, am I ever going to be done with this? It's just forever and ever. Yeah. But, you know, it's just we have to keep on uncovering all those layers. And if it's been there for a long time, it might have dug in really far. So we've got a lot yeah. of mess to clean out. And then energetically speaking, those kind of traumas create points where people who are still in a lower timeline, you can get um, like energetic parasites that will patch in there and then complicate oh. matters. So, you know, damage to your energy field creates a vulnerability for that. So, and of course, those things don't exist in higher timelines, but you right. know, we're, if we're dealing with somebody who's still you know, in, in an early stage of awakening or who is for whatever reason in a lower timeline, then that can also make it a lot harder because those things don't want you to address your wounds and deal with them because that's their food source. Yeah. So parasites isn't parasites that we know, right? Are you talking about that? Are you talking about entities or um, oh, parasites? Some of them, there are a whole different bunch of them. Um, some are entities. Okay. Some are more just kind of um, less less thinking energy forms. Mm-hmm. They're just drawn to the energy okay. from that that vulnerability. Okay. Um, so you can have yeah. a whole range of different things that happen like that. Yeah. So let's talk about because it kind of leads us into um, which I wanted to ask you at the beginning, but I guess it wasn't time to ask that question. The cycles of the phoenix. I didn't know there was cycles of the phoenix. So I think that's really important because you think you die and then you're reborn and you're like, no, there's more in between. (laughs) Yes, yes. So can you explain to us that? Yeah. For most people in times past, particularly, you had one big Phoenix cycle in your life, which was your aha moment where everything that was old just kind of got burned away and you're like, oh, God, help me. I'm dying. (laughs) And, um, you know, but then it was like, all that is is to burn away everything that doesn't serve anymore so you can rise. And so for a phoenix, that's what happens is you reach that point, you burn, everything that doesn't serve burns away, but then you've got to cut that like middle ground where you're suddenly all new and you're trying to figure out who you even are. So, you know, we might term that a midlife crisis or something like that. Um, But, uh, you know, there's a point in between the burn and the rise where you're just kind of sitting there going, what do I even do with this? And you can mm. lose like a lot of people in your life at that point, too, because you become a different person. Effectively, your core is still the same you, mm. but all the extraneous bullshit from your life just and a lot of people, their whole life was defined by that bullshit. <laughs> so, yeah. um, mm. you know, they don't know what to do with themselves. Yeah. So, but then eventually you grow your feathers and you fly, but uh, you first have to get through that period of time where you're like, what even is my life anymore? But right now, a lot of people are experiencing multiple Phoenix cycles. Like they will burn and then they'll be like, woohoo, okay, yay. And then it's like, oh, bam, burn again <laughs> because we have so much to clear. So, you know, we're not yeah. just clearing for that one lifetime. We're clearing for lifetimes and ancestors like we were talking about so you know seeing more people go through multiple phoenix cycles now and um you know not really knowing what's going on because of course these aren't things we're really taught Mm -hmm. so is there an in-between stage i mean i know once you're burning so then you get this thing of like you lose the friends and you know you you know your life is different yeah. Uh, is, is there anything that you're doing in between to build that? I mean, you know, like, I mean, yeah. Yeah, you're basically rediscovering everything about yourself and, you know, knowing yeah. who you are without all of 
those other things, all the things that came together to define you, which weren't really anything about you. Those were things that either somebody right. else put on you or society told you you should be or, um, you know, things that you thought were important that aren't there anymore. So without all of that, you're like, well, who am I? Yeah. And then you have the chance to decide that too at that point. That's a really crucial juncture because you can either decide to like take all the dust and stuff and glue it back on yourself and try and be what you were, which of course is not going to work because let's say if you were a literal bird <laughs> and you tried to take all of that and put it back on, your feathers would never grow. So, yeah. you know, that doesn't work out so well for folks. But if you take that moment and just be vulnerable and naked and say, all right, so here's, you know, this little bit that is me. This is the me yeah. that is myself without everything else, without anybody else. And that's part of why yeah. people go away at times in our lives is so that we are not influenced by everything that they think we are or their expectations of us or who we were. Yeah. And that's when people will say to yeah. you, You've changed so much. I don't even know you anymore. Because yes, <laughs> right, yeah, right. You know, and so I mean, it, it's not an easy process. It's painful as anything would be, like that. You know, fire is not a comfortable thing, but it's a transformative mm -hmm. thing. And so you know, you hit that point where it's like, well, now what do I do? What do I want to be? Yeah. I have the chance to yeah. completely redefine myself. So that's your, your middle stage Phoenix time. And uh, a lot of people don't know what to do with that because you're a lot alone at that point. Um, you're in between the point where all of your old life is and where your new life is. And so yeah. that period of time feels really yeah. desolate. You yeah. know, but I mean, it's really actually a, a hugely magical, important time because you don't want somebody else telling you who you're going to be. You don't want outside factors determining that. So that's why we are sort of isolated at that point. Yeah. Well, it goes back to what we talked about earlier, taking back your power with you mm. firing your doctors, you know. Yep. Taking back your power. And and I wrote down, too, that I, something that you had said earlier in the show, too, was about how, again, going back to the running, right, and how that taught you to close. So it's about embracing as much as we don't like what we're going through, I think if we have the perception, what you're saying is that, you know, that if we have that perception that this is really for the benefit, right? There's, there's a reason why we are going through this and have that. I mean, the, you know, it's hard to feel that when you're going through it, but to really embrace that because that gets you to the rise, right? Yeah. Well, after you burn, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's the only thing to do at that point, you know, yeah. is to just let go and say, all right, here's where mm -hmm. I am. And here I have all these choices, like finding the power in that situation is really where it's at because it doesn't feel powerful right that moment. It feels devastating. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, when you burn down to nothing, you have the chance to completely <laughs> revamp everything. Re Yes, yes. And don't you think, too, that once you step forward, I know that I've heard this and it's, I know it's true for myself. Once you've stepped forward, there's no going back. Like, you can't go back to what was. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that some people do manage to. <laughs> yeah. I think that probably takes a whole <laughs> lot of determination on their part. But um, wow. you know, some people will be so resistant to that that in spite of yeah. everything they'll still say no 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 no! i don't want to do this i don't want to do this and they'll keep themselves stuck there and um you know they'll try for a long time to experience life as it was before i don't think it really happens for them but i think they try really hard and so instead of taking yeah. that time and growing their new wings and everything they just sit there and go nope 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 i'm not doing this you know and i mean i definitely yeah. have had some points in my life when i've done that <laughs> You know, yeah. I've definitely had some resistant points where I was like, I'm not doing this. I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, Me too. I, <laughs> yeah, no way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very, very tired and I don't want to do this. But, um, yeah. you know, that just delays the whole process because it's going to happen sooner or later. 
Yeah. And do you, with the Ascension, it seems like that there's like, this is, you know, it's like you either, if they know that they know the benefits of that, it's like they would want to do that. You know what I mean? But yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to, to us, see I guess that. it would make sense that way. Yeah. I think too, like we were talking about last night with the fact that whenever you're in a lower timeline, you don't always retain all the things you know when you're in a higher timeline. Mm. Because I know when that happens yeah. with me, I'll know there's more out there and I'll be like, ah, I know there's an answer there, but I can't reach it right yeah. now. And so I think mm. that when that happens too, people don't understand what's happening and so it's harder to hold on to that hope and see that there's something else better coming up so uh that complicates things too because you're just like ah oh, screw this this is terrible <laughs> yeah yeah and then the other point was you had mentioned a little bit about remembering who we are mm. yeah and i that happens for people at different rates and at different times. Um, you know, there's usually some kind of catalyst, I think, involved in that. Um, for me, it was definitely, uh, it was a matter of being close to somebody that I'd known in a past life. And at the same time, I read a report. This was hmm, almost a year ago that this incident happened for me, where I had been spending time in proximity to somebody I had um, significant past life ties to. And um, I had read a report and something in that report just activated a lot of memories for me. And that's when we were talking earlier about <laughs> the different aspects of me, that's when I discovered my Jaguar self, which was one of the, my imaginary friends when I was a child, I always thought that it was just, you know, my, my imaginary pet jaguar. <laughs> um, but nice. I would love one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, when I was a kid, it was delightful. Although everybody else was just, yeah. oh, that child has so much imagination. Um, you know, nice. or take your head That's out of the clouds. Thing. But um, oh, in reality, yeah. I was interfacing yeah. with, you know, a higher part of myself. So, um, you know, and I mean, our memories come back to us like that and, pieces here and there and our awareness of ourselves as more than just this human vessel um yeah. you know i mean for some people that happens all different ways like they meet somebody and they get an activation that suddenly they're like wait what are all these things i'm feeling how do i know all these different things you know um mm -hmm. or they'll read a report and suddenly they're like whoa yeah okay these things make sense um which kind of mm -hmm. feels like you're going crazy when it happens, especially early on, and you're like, what is this? You know, I've gone from being, yeah. you know, a, a reasonably normal person to suddenly, you know, have all these memories that don't feel like they're mine. You know, so yeah. that can be a little bumpy at first. And, and two, like, we're so conditioned to believe that we're so much less. We're not important. We're just, you know, one more little mm -hmm. cog in the machine. And so that conditioning yeah. is heavy and it's very hard to break out of because if you believe that you're something more than that, people aren't so kind about it sometimes. So, yeah. you know, because they don't want, you know, they, they're scared to step outside of their own things and realize themselves. So they don't want other people doing that either. So, you know, there are a lot yeah. of barriers that pop up to that and try and stop us from it. But in my experience, it doesn't stop anyway. It doesn't matter what else is going on. If you're going to remember, you're Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I wrote down, we, pro you know, projecting onto others, you know, um, or keeping people at that, you know, that space. But that's a, you know, a lower dimensional thing, too. So until they, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Rise above that. Right. You know, and that's part of, too, when people start to fall away that are from your old life, um, you know, because a lot yeah. of them are not going to understand or they're just not ready at that point. Um, so, and it's really like you can choose either, you, you can choose to stay there with them for a while. Um, but it, it's such a, you know, in my experience, what that creates is a divide where you're stuck between your 
lower dimensional self and your higher dimensional self and that creates a really hard conflict within you so yeah. you know it's hard to let people go at that point but it's damaging to everybody to hold on to yeah. what no longer resonates with you so true yeah it's so true yeah wow for sure is there anything else you want to say? You want to do Q and A? Sure. Do you have anything you want to add to what we've talked about on the show? Is there anything you want to add? Hmm. You think, and I'm going to see if there's any questions. We're going to open up to Q and A, you guys, if you have any question. But you think about what you want to say first. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Um, also, in the same vein as being in lower timelines, sometimes, well, I, probably all the time, we will find ourselves put back into a lower timeline because we're there to fix something or change oh, something, different. you know, or we're there to interface with someone who's going to be affected by us. So, you know, it's helpful at that point to try and remember that you're there for a reason instead of getting pulled down into it because, man, it can be rough, but sometimes yeah. we've got to have that experience, you know, and just like other things, like we were talking about traumas, sometimes we can't know mm. about it in advance. And so, mm. uh, you know, that that's a thing that I, I've seen a lot of people having trouble with, and I have myself as well at other points in time. Such a great point, though, that if we know that we're dipping down in that to help the other person because we've experienced that, it makes it different. You know, right. we can't it really makes it different. Heart if we know, because then our brain's engaged. Right. And we're like, but what should yeah. I do? What should I do? Instead of just, you know, okay, I just have to be navigated by intuition at this point. You know, I have to yeah. tune into guidance because I don't know what to do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Awesome. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. It's a good point. Okay, we have a question from Jill. Linus Jill. Hi, Jill. Uh, she says, what's the best way to deal with red pill truth trauma and all that goes with this spiritual awakening? It's kind of stressful. Thank you, Jill. Hmm. Um, for one, creating for yourself a self-care program that allows you to sort of um, <laughs> it's sort of like my emergency kit to pull myself back into a higher vibration because you know sometimes if you're dealing with people who are really stressed out say for instance you've got people who are very much about watching the news and then they want to tell you about all of it and whatever and you're like <clears throat> there's a reason I don't watch the news <laughs> yeah. so um but i mean sometimes they're sharing with you their their fear and their trauma and you're trying to, to say hey you know this is why this is going on is to to keep you in fear they can't hear that and so sometimes you know just being present for them helps them but for you you've also got to have an escape hatch sort of to to get yourself back into the right space so you know for me it's like okay I'm going to take this time and I'm going to go sit by the river. And, uh, you know, for me, mm -hmm. like, that's a big one. The river is extremely helpful to me. I can go sit over there mm -hmm. and breathe, get some good air, mm -hmm. get some sun, put my feet on the ground mm -hmm. and watch the water flow. And, um, you know, like this will be different for different people. This is just my personal example. Of course, extrapolate whatever works for you. But um, for me, I focus on the water and I try to envision the water flowing through me and just carrying away everything else that doesn't serve. Mm. And uh, that helps me get back to where I need to be pretty quickly. Yeah. So, but breathing wow. especially, always breathing. Mm. Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you. I love that. Thank you. Thank you, Guyana. Thank you, Jill, for asking that beautiful question. Jenny has a question. Are you not supposed to run from energies, even if it's nonsense? I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. 
are you not supposed to run from energies even if it's nonsense? So she's saying if it's well, I'm, I'm chirping your your question, Jenny. So what you're saying is that should you shouldn't you be running from energies uh, if it's nonsense? Oh, um. That's not my interpretation. If I'm wrong, Jenny, re rephrase the question, please. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I just let it roll off my back if it's if it's not pertinent to me. You know, I mean, if you're dealing with somebody who's close in your life that you can't just kind of be like, yeah, whatever, um, you know, then you can just say, I disagree, you know, but I love you, so I'm not going to argue with you. Um, yeah. You know, or... I mean, I don't really run away from them. Generally, I try and transmute what's coming at me. So, and I mean, that might be different for different folks, but personally, if I'm in a situation where somebody else's energy is really low and, you know, trying to drag me down, I just light myself up brighter to try and <laughs> pull that up higher. So, and in that way, you can change the whole feeling of a room. If you walk in there with the intention to be so bright that nothing can touch you then that starts to spread to all the people around you you know and i practice that at grocery stores and all over the place so that whenever i'm in an intense situation i can automatically default to that feeling and say you know i'm here to change things so yeah. you know and i mean we can't always get everybody to to rise to that point but a lot of people will suddenly just be like huh i suddenly feel lighter they don't know why yeah but, um, you know, we have the opportunity always to change things around us and to show people the yeah. example of that. Yeah. Yeah. And it could be just having a conversation with them, you know, and saying something to them, you know, to, uh, you know, like Rick talks about if you're in the line and they're agitated because the line is moving slow or whatever, you know, you, you know, could say, gosh, you know, it's, so sunny out today, you know, isn't it nice if, you know, you things planned the rest of the day, you know, or whatever, yeah. just to get their mind off that. And the next thing you know, they're at the front of the line, you yeah. know. Right. Yeah. yeah. And even non-verbally, yeah. just you raising your yeah. vibration affects everybody around yeah. you. So, yeah. you know, if you're yeah. a chatty person, then, you know, chat with them, say, oh, hey, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The sun, or you know, what whatever seems like it's gonna help take their attention off yeah. of whatever they're upset about. But you know, even if you're not a really talkative person, you can just glow. You just expand your energy farther out so that it's affecting theirs. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, um, I don't know if that answers the question. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I feel it does. If it doesn't let us know, Jenny, uh, cause she has another question. Could you give an example of transmuting energy? Mm. Let's see. Um, it depends on the circumstance. You, like in what we were talking about, you know, let's say you're out somewhere and people are angry and upset and whatever, even just being able to smile at somebody, and say, you know, I see that you're upset. And acknowledging what they're feeling in the first place is sometimes helpful yeah. because even just the act of listening to somebody allows them to just yeah. vent that and then suddenly they're like, huh, I feel better. Especially if you yeah. are as bright as you can be at that point. If you've already lit yourself up, and I do that before I leave the house. If I know I'm going out at yeah. all, then I go prepared, you know, I get myself as bright as I can before I even go out my door because I know I'm going to encounter yeah. people who are upset about any number of things, you know, and I'm going to have the chance to make a difference to them. So, you know, when I see that somebody's having a really hard time, I smile at them, you know, yeah. or I just present myself as a friendly person and, um, you know, even if they're angry and grumpy, I smile at them and say, hi, you know, how are you doing? Or, you know, isn't it a beautiful day? Or, you know, yeah. something that engages them. And some of them won't. Some of them don't want to. 
you know so all yeah. you can do is just be yourself and be lit up and you know if it doesn't affect them it's going to affect somebody else so and someone else is going to yeah. see you do that and then they're going to be inspired to do the same thing so you yeah. know you can transmute that way um but also lost that train of thought um but also changing perspective will transmute things. Mm -hmm. So if you can help someone to look at something from a different perspective or yourself, you know, if it's yourself that mm -hmm. you're, you're having a hard time and you can do that and step outside and be the observer and say, okay, what are different ways that I can look at this situation? Or mm -hmm. you can trust that even if you don't see whatever is the answer, even if you can't see anything good about the situation, you can trust that there is. You know, because um, even though at the time it can seem like, well, what the heck is this about? <laughs> there's always some reason there and there's always some purpose. And so we're given those opportunities mm -hmm. and it's hard. It's not, you know, like, oh, yeah, yeah. that was totally easy. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, like for me, it's been a lot about trust and surrender and understanding that even if I don't get it and my brain is like, what? That I just give my brain something else to do. I say, hey, you know, why don't yeah. you think about this other thing? Let's solve this other problem. And so it's like giving a dog a bone. Whenever you want them to go lay down mm -hmm. and be quiet somewhere, you say, here, here's something to chew on. Go take care of that so that I can get yeah. back into the space I need to be in. So, you know, there are a lot of different ways to do that. But those are the ones that come to mind immediately yeah. yeah i too came to my mind if, if i don't mind if you don't mind me sharing yeah. that, that i got um one um i remember you know rick which i feel is true because it's happened in my life is divinity has placed you there for a purpose like you're there to light it up is it really kind of goes in with what you said too so you're there for a purpose so when you see those energies it's like your light can really shift that that's one of the things that um, I was told to write down. And then the other thing is um, the St. Germain Violet Flame Prayer. I don't know if you guys know that, but it is a powerful prayer. Like I have said that in an apartment building, a condo building I used to live in, um, the guy was just like a bomb waiting to go off. And he was, you know, he it was just a weird situation. And there was a lot of things always going on. And I would always transmute like a lot of yelling, you know, a lot of violence and stuff. And I would just hold my hands up and say the Violet, the St. Germain um, prayer. So anybody that doesn't know it, I feel like I'm supposed to say it uh, for anybody that's been watching the, the, um, the video afterwards, too. Uh, so it's um, transmute, transmute by the violet fire, all causes and cores, not of God's desire. I am a being of cause alone that causes love, the sacred tone. And you say that three times and I just put my hands up like if there's something going on, like somebody's racing down the highway or something, you know, I'll bless them or whatever. And, you know, keep them safe and everybody else on the road safe and transmute that. But I know this because um, I taught a class on this and it's a really powerful prayer. So but I think you like you said, too, when your divinity has you there for a purpose. And so we never know why. But our presence um, Especially, you know, the ones, you know, that we have awakened and we've done the work. Our presence is really important. So, yes. yeah. So. And, and even if we don't see any change right that moment, we never yes. know who else is watching and who has been affected. We might not be there to affect that person who's angry, but we might yeah. be there to affect somebody else who witnesses us doing what we're doing. And then yes. they go, oh, hey. That's a good idea. Just like people yeah. are inspired by acts of kindness. You know, if somebody sees someone yeah. feeding a homeless person, they're much more likely yeah. to go and do that. So, yeah. you know, we don't ever know. And so just because we don't see a result doesn't mean it isn't happening. You know, and I mean, I've had that go on in the past where I will think a situation was totally botched. <laughs> you know, you're yeah. like, oh, wow, I didn't yeah. handle that well at all. And then years <laughs> yeah. later, somebody will say this changed my life, this interaction. Uh, and, um, you yeah. know, I'll be like, I will have thought that I just completely messed that up. But in reality, yeah. it's exactly what I was supposed to do. Yeah. So. Yeah. So true. So true. Yeah. No, Jenny said, thank you. You're welcome. 
Um, Ramana, I did you want me to say it again? Um, I don't know if you heard what I had said. Uh, let let us know. But there is a, a question from Jerry. I have been the fortunate. I have been the fortunate enough. The wall. I've been. I have been the fortunate one enough to experience the great healing work you do. I know you have classes coming up in your area. Is there any chance you may be able to do an online, do any online classes? Thank you, Jerry. Great question. Oh, yeah, that's definitely possible. You know, especially if I know that people are interested in that, I would definitely do mm -hmm. some online classes. You know, I've been doing some small group healing stuff, but I have thought about expanding past that. So, yeah. Yeah. And you know you can use the Zoom platform for that. Oh, okay, awesome. So we can we can talk about that after the show when we close the show down. You and I will stay on, and I can share that with you. Then you can kind okay. of yeah, you, you'll be able. That'd to be great. It. Thank you. Um, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, because that would be a really good platform because then you can have people, however many you want to join, you know that that join for your class and yeah, you know, that would be good. Uh, like a like a webinar, be kind of like mm -hmm. a webinar. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if Ramana wants me to say it again, but I can always, uh, well, since there's no other questions right at the moment, I will say it again. Uh, for anybody that didn't hear, and um, I'm sorry, I always close my eyes for it. Uh, transmute, transmute by the violet fire, all causes and cores, not of God's desire. I am a being of cause, cause tone. And you say that three times. Um, yeah, so that's it. And I was just going to see if there is any, oh, 33. Okay. Jenny has a question when well, I was 34. No matter what happens to us, do we awaken in divine timing? Great question, Jenny. Yeah. Yeah. That is a good question. I believe we do, you know, even though yeah. our human self is impatient and, you know, wants to micromanage all kinds of things and, wants things to happen on some kind of schedule, I think everything happens when and how it's supposed to. Yeah, I agree. And can I add to that too? I think that also, um, which really is what you're saying as well, um, is that I notice for myself in my life that when I have gone off the path, the universe has taken me right back on it. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's, Cause I'm like, Oh, you know, cause it does, it gets so bad on that path, you know, cause right. I think we're, it's not a straight path. It's like, you're here. You're like, <laughs> it's like that sign that they have. It's like, go this way, that way, this way, this way, you know, and so you're kind of, I think like you said earlier, which is great. Cause I think we have to, we're having those experiences because there's a reason why, like nothing is by accident, you know, right. like where we're at, which like you said in the very beginning, which is so true. It's like if somebody, you know, telling you, you are where you are because your choices, really? <laughs> like that's like such a mean thing to say, but it's so true. You know? yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, and you know, that our, our higher selves have made this agreement in advance, you know, like that, that was, that was a hard thing to accept because I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> what were you thinking? Yeah. Yeah. By yourself. This yeah. Is you know. But, <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, sometimes yeah. it's like no way I would have chosen this. But then, if you can step back and see all of the things, you know, see the the patterns that emerge of why something had to play out the way that it did, then yeah. you know it's amazing when you can get that perspective and see it. Um, it's a whole different thing because it's like, oh, that's why that had to happen exactly that way. It couldn't have happened any other way because all these things had to happen from there. And, um, you know, those moments of clarity are what really help because then after that, it becomes a lot easier to say, okay, you know, this seems really not right right now, but there's a reason for it. Yeah. I just don't know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I think going back and doing like a timeline has helped me and all the pivotal points in my life that I look back and I'm, cause I resisted like you too. It's like, no, I don't want to do this. You know, <laughs> Don't make me do this. You know why? You know, it's the unknown. It's like, well, what if I do that? And something happens, you know, <laughs> where all these things go through our head. And if we just realize that there's a bigger plan, like he's, you know, God has his plan that, you know, it's just magnificent. It's better than we could ever imagine, you know, and it's mm -hmm. just like, 
trust me on this one. He's like saying, just trust me, you know? And so, <laughs> yeah, so I, it's helped for me to have that timeline to go, oh, I resisted, but that's how I got to here. And I resisted here, but that's how I got to here, right? And so, you, and I realized there is, like you said, there is this divine timing, and it'll it'll always bring you back around somehow, some way. You'll come back around. Yeah, yeah, and I find that even the resistance ends up producing some results. So I'll be thinking, I, no, I'm gonna, you know, dig in my heels and whatever. Still, yeah. that ends up serving the higher purpose anyway. So I'm just like. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You're a go with the flow girl, which I love. I mean, yeah. you know, and, and that's really such a beautiful place to be because there's just no resistance. Like you said, things just kind of just one after the other. It was just so effortless, wasn't it? Is that what you yeah. were saying earlier? It gets easier yeah. whenever you do that because yeah. I've usually been that way. And then sometimes if I'm, in proximity to people who aren't, I, I'll sort of unconsciously try and conform to their, you know, they, they yeah. want structure and, you know, things to have answers and whatever, which I know that that is not the way things work in my life anyway. Um, <laughs> I can't answer for anybody else. I just know in my life that it doesn't work that way. And yeah. so if I get pulled that way, things are not right anymore. And so my flow is all kinds of messy and not right and whatever. Whereas if I'm just relaxed and going, I accept whatever's happening. You know, I accept that I don't understand why it's happening, but there's some reason. And so I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to, you know, go in the moment and say, what can I do? Okay, let's do it. Then my life is so much yeah. easier. And, you know, I'm not wearing myself yeah. out. I used to always tell people that it's like, if you're in a river, you can fight the flow and try and swim up the river, but you're still going to go wherever that river is going, ultimately. You're just going to get there exhausted if you're fighting the flow, whereas if you relax and float on down there, you get there in some kind of reasonable condition to handle whatever's going on. You know, so yeah. it's sort of that let go or be dragged <laughs> concept. You can fight yeah. it, but why? You're still going the same yeah. place you're going. Yeah. And if you know, because you've seen other points in your life that it's always turned out for the betterment, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So if you know that it makes it much easier that when something comes up, you're like, ah, oh, okay, I'm going to just yeah. relax here. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for that. And thank you, Jenny, for that question. Jerry has a question with the ancestral healing. Can you call on relatives to bring them forward for healing or do you just have to go through your process and deal with them as, as your issues come up? You can certainly ask, um, you know, you can ask your ancestors to participate in their healing, you know, or you can go back into their timeline. Um, I mean, that's the thing that I'm still learning a lot about is to be able to, to essentially you call it time travel, I suppose, where, you're going back into a past situation and changing it, you know, or you could call it a timeline hop. There are a lot of different ways you could look at it, but going yeah. back to you, especially if you know what the traumatic situation was, but you can also call on your ancestor and say, Hey, you know, let's resolve this. Let's work through it together. You know, it depends on whether your ancestors are, are willing to assist in that process because not all of them are always, that agreeable about it. Some of them are still stuck in their own prison. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Great question, Jerry. Mm -hmm. Let's see. No other questions as of now. Is there anything that you want to add? Um, just going back through here. So. There's I don't know if this question was for somebody in the page. Uh, I think she might be answering somebody else's question. Oh. You're 
Jerry says thank you. You're welcome. You. Okay, so be who you did have a question. Okay, that's what I was looking for. I couldn't. <laughs> if you were trying to have a conversation with somebody else, okay, let me get back down in there. Um, sorry about that. I am trying to search for it again. Okay, if you're blocked on your right side, male side, and you don't trust it, so it stops you from w walking right, does it mean you're scared of male energy? Um, I mean, I don't think it automatically means that, but that could definitely be a thing. You know, we are all in the process of integrating those parts of ourselves. You know, and um, with the divine masculine now rising, we're all feeling that some way or another. And so as that mm. happens, we're resolving those kind of things. But um, I don't know if it necessarily automatically means that we're afraid of, of our masculine side or, um, you know, but if you've had trauma in the past that ha has caused you to distrust yourself or, you know, the divine masculine in general, then, you know, yeah, that's a possibility. Awesome. Thank you. We have a great question. Um, Jill, what about, what are the best ways to help awaken others without sounding crazy? <laughs> Thanks, Jill. That's a really good question. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. a really good question. Um, yeah. Okay, first of all, you kind of have to look at whether they're even ready because trying to force somebody to awaken when they're not ready can hurt them. Um, yeah. You know, and everybody has their own free will. So we can't shake them awake if they're not ready. And uh, we have to respect that. Just like with healing, you know, I can't just be like, Phew, I'm going to heal you whether you want it or not. Um, you have to yeah. respect them. And if they're not ready to wake up, even though we might desperately want for them to, we have to love them enough to accept them where they are and, you know, give them that love and acceptance. And then when they're ready to, they're going to find us approachable instead of, you know, they're going to, if we try and force them, they're not going to want to come to us when they are ready. So we just have to accept that that's where they are. And, um, you know, we can try and explain to them, but if they're not receptive, continuing to do that will just cause them to be distant from us and resistant also so yeah. if you kind of just lay out some breadcrumbs you can kind of you can tell who's ready for which breadcrumbs usually so you know and i mean i know that right now everything is so this energy is so intense that we just want to be up in everybody's face going wake up wake up wake up why can't you yeah. <laughs> um <Hey. laughs> Yeah, I could do a show every day just like, wake up, people. Yeah, right. You only do. Like, it's so much better here. Yeah. And I mean, we want them yeah. to, of course, but we have to yeah. we have to let them flow with what their timeline is. And so, you know, like, we present yeah. the information and we try and do it gently and carefully, just like you wouldn't want to run in and jump on somebody and wake them up. Things are already kind of startling enough. So, you know we have to be gentle with people and, um, you know, really, really tuned into intuition and guidance as far as what we can and can't do, because a lot of times our brain will be like, but, you know, we need to do this yeah. right now, right now. And that's not the right timing. So we've got to, um, you know, pay attention to what's right for them and respect that as hard as it can be. Yeah. Yeah. Let's. Uh, can you elaborate on what we talked about last night too, like how we can enable them? You know, like uh, when you're. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that's. that's what you're I'm really glad yeah. you brought that up because I hadn't even thought about that. Um, yeah. Okay. So say you've got somebody who isn't ready to wake up, and you keep trying and trying and trying, and you keep trying to work with them and heal them and everything else what you're doing is delaying them hitting that point, which is hard because if you care about this person, you know, or you just care about everybody, 
watching them suffer is really hard when you're really like, I've got the answer, I've got the solution, just, you know, trust me, yeah. and whatever. Yeah. But by continuing to push whenever we're not supposed to, we delay that process for them. We stop them from their own development, and then they dig their heels in, and it takes longer, and it actually harms mm -hmm. them. So, you know, we have to be careful not to do that, um, you know, and the faster that they reach their, their point, you know, their dark night of the soul, uh, the faster that they find their own awakening. But, you know, us messing with that process can really be harmful. Yeah. How can you tell it? Um, how can you tell that? Like, how would you know? So you're trying to, I mean, I, I kind of really, I know the answer to this question, but I still feel like I have to answer, ask the question. It's like, how would you know that you're trying to heal this person, right? Mm -hmm. And you, they feel that they're ready. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? They're like, no, I'm really ready for this. I'm, you know, I, I want this to happen. And you're like, okay, you know, so what would you do in that case? Like, how would you know if they were or if they weren't? if they weren't i mean the I obvious follow would be, but, guidance yeah. on those points you know like i listen yeah and I, I pay attention especially if i'm doing energy work on someone if they aren't actually ready it won't happen you know like it, yeah. it might happen on some other timeline but um it won't work like i'll feel the resistance and i can't just you know be like bam you're gonna take this whether you're ready or not and they might think that they're ready. Yeah. A lot of people think they do. They are. But, um, yeah. you know, you can only give them whatever they're energetically able to accept. So, yeah. and I mean, that's still, you're still helping them. It's just maybe not at the pace that they would like or we would like. And people will get frustrated because they want to go faster. They want to develop faster. But, you know, they need that time in between to absorb and integrate because uh, it can be really overwhelming. And if we've been awakening for a while, we might forget what that early stage is like and how overwhelming yeah. everything is. So, you know, we just want to yeah. pull everybody up to where we are and say, come on, come on, come on, let's do this. But, yeah. You know, for them, it's like <laughs> suddenly everything about their life has changed and nothing that they thought was true is true. Mm. And that's a confusing mm. spot for people. So trying to go too fast can knock them back into, you know, a, a lower place they've done they got to get back out of yeah such a beautiful answer and so true and i also wrote down you're planting the seeds right mm -hmm. that should for them to what at some point maybe down the line three weeks a month a year whatever they may awaken to oh i remember when diana was telling me about that you know <laughs> and then the other thing i wrote down too was if they're not doing the work like you're giving them because like you said earlier it, we have to do the work ourselves you know, right. we can't do it for you. You know, they have to do the work themselves. And if you're giving and you're helping them and you're like, okay, now you need to go home and you, know, you need to write or what you need to go within and whatever. And they're not willing to do the work because it's, you know, it's looking at a lot of stuff we don't want to look at. Yeah. Then we kind of know there too, but definitely I feel like planting the seeds for sure. Yeah, definitely. And especially if we do that gently and respectfully of their boundaries, yeah then they'll feel comfortable talking to us later. You know, and it's funny because that made me think actually yeah. of a few years ago, um, my, my boyfriend at the time was just starting on his path of awakening. And um, he kept trying to tell me all kinds of things. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> that doesn't even make any sense. And, um, yeah. you know, like he was really, really pushy about it. Like, he was so excited by what he was learning that he really wanted me to join him in that. I was not ready. You know, I was not ready for a lot of that information. I was very spiritual at that point. You know, I was practicing a lot of different spiritual things, but I was not ready for that level of awakening right then. And so, you know, he was just like, but come on, you know, and he was just overloading me with so much information. And it seemed really extreme to me at the time. And it did. It kind of put me off for a while. I was like, I don't even want to hear about it. I don't want to hear anything about it. Just, you know. Yeah. And so, you know, but then I was like, well, someday when I see him again, I'm going to have to be like, 
sorry, man. You were right. (laughs) (laughs) Let's see if you're out there listening. Thanks, man. You hope plant the seed because it really did. Even though, you know, he was trying to move me forward at a pace I wasn't ready for, the information stuck there with me. And whenever I did start to be like, whoa, wait a minute, this stuff is really true. Then I remembered, you know, all the things he'd said and went, oh, yeah, that's what he was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So all all in proper time. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's so beautiful because it's so true. And and when you like you said earlier, when you really love someone, you know, your kids or your family or boyfriend or husband or whatever, you you're just trying to, you know, you just want them to awaken, you know, and we do try to put that, you know, I shouldn't say all of us, but you know, I'm saying just from their perspective. Yeah. But you yeah, do try most, to do that and so it's like, yeah, taking the yeah, time. Most of us have had that experience. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah. that falls into the category of we can't keep on. If somebody's not ready to do the work they've got to do, there are plenty of people right now awakening that are and need help, you know. And so instead yeah. of us putting so much of our time and energy into somebody who's not ready, not mm-hmm. ready, we're also violating their free will by doing that. And that's that's just not yeah. good in the first place. But also we're taking all that energy and putting it into somebody who's not ready. When that same energy mm. could help these three people who are ready. Yeah. So, you know, as hard as it is, and boy, don't I know it, <laughs> you know, <'cause> there are <laughs> yeah. definitely, you know, people that I'm like, oh, please wake up. But, you know, yeah. I can't make them. And because I love them and respect them, I have to let go of that and just say, you know, you do what you're going to do. And that's part of that whole separation that we were talking about in Phoenix cycles is there's that point where you can keep on trying to drag them along with you and you're going to be exhausted. They're going to be dug in. You're not getting anywhere and you're stuck down there in the same timeline with them, not doing what you're supposed to be doing, you know? And I mean, of course Mm -hmm. we always serve wherever we are, but you know, if we're investing our time, and energy more wisely we're helping more people who then go on to help more people you know what i mean that's really the whole point is that we want to be able to show other people how to do all these things so that they can go on and affect more people because if i help this one person they're going to go out and tell the people around them and they're going to use yes. what they've learned through me helping them to help those people who then go on to expand outward and outward and outward and so eventually yeah. you've got, you know, just tons of people who have all come from, you know, one person talking to another person. Yeah. So, you know, if we're putting our time and energy into the people who are ready for that, we're spreading that so much faster, even though it might not be exactly the people we really, really dearly want to awaken. It'll come around for them eventually, <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah. they better do what they're going to do. Yeah so true yeah that's like yeah it's so true gosh for sure you know oh i love it i love it uh let's see there are no anybody have any other questions you want to ask diana but i do want to say um while there's people if you want if you have a question if you want to get a hold of guyana you can go to her facebook page the road home uh, hyphen healing and integrating our whole selves. Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. So if you want to get a hold of her, you can do that. If you want to find out more about what she does, because she does a lot more stuff that we're going to talk about some other time on some shows <laughs> uh, when she's ready to do that. But yeah, yeah, because you you have some really great tools in your toolbox. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. Uh, no other questions, you guys. So what is one thing that you would want to pass along to all the viewers that are listening today, the ones that will be listening in the future, that has really helped you on your journey? What's one thing Hmm. you can give them? Trust and surrender really have been like Mm. the huge ongoing themes of everything. Um, I'm a really, really cerebral person. I'm very... uh, it's difficult for me to get out of my brain 
and get into my heart. And, um, mm. you know, so much of my life has been based upon intellectual pursuits that it was hard for me to just let go of that and stop trying to reason everything out and um, calculate the probability of this, that, or the other thing and surrender mm. and trust that everything really is in hand. Cause sometimes things just really don't look like they make sense. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. you know, the, the trust that we are guided and that if we can quiet our mind, we know what to do. That's probably the biggest thing mm. that has helped me. Wow, that's huge. Trust and surrender is so huge. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's like you said, it's about because you're going with the flow. So in order to go with the flow, you have to surrender, right? Like the right. resistance just to let go and knowing that there's a better outcome. I love it. Yeah, let's see if there's another question here. Free will planet. Nope. So with that being said, Diana. Thank you so much for being on the show and just sharing yourself and what you do and, and helping and healing and helping the ones that are awakened, the ones that are awakening and just really um, being able to rewire, reprogram, you know, PTSD is, you know, he talked about as a, you know, it's a thing that's out there right now in that 4D um, dimension. And so reality. So I'm sure there's a lot of people. I know people that I'm going to be sharing. Let them know. Like, check out the video. You know, contact her because. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's something that's really uh, so beneficial. You know, and that rewiring that's so programmed and so embedded in there is so important. Yeah. So. <laughs> woo! <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. That was is Velvet awesome. playing around? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> oh. Okay. Thank you, Sharon. I thought it was another question. Yes. Oh, where'd you go? You're way down there. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. The reconfigure. There you are. So I just want to say thank you again so much, and thank you, Velvet, for joining us on the show as well. <laughs> so, yeah, it's such a pleasure, and I'm sure we'll have you on again when you're ready to, to you know, we can talk about the other stuff we talked about, okay. which would be great. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you. Mm, no, thank you. It. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. And I want to thank everybody who joined. Oh, you're so welcome. My pleasure. It was such a, um, just a beautiful um, show, you know, just in the sense of that what, it, you know, because there's wounds, that, especially when this ascension, what we're coming up. And like you said, with the awakened ones, that there's really a lot of uh, things that are coming up for people. They don't know what to do with this, you know. And so... Yeah, so I, just, you know, again, I just really thank you. And it's such a pleasure. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for everyone who joined us today and tuned in. We love you. We thank you. Thank you yeah. for all the beautiful and thank amazing you, questions, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Good questions. Really. Yes, 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 yes. So we thank you so much and we thank the ones who will be tuning in. Um, I thought the replay or just tuning in wherever you're tuning in if you didn't make the show today. So we really great. We really appreciate all the love and support and we will see you on the next show. I have another show coming tomorrow night with Kalia Daya. So tune in for that to watch for that to happen. So thank you again, Guyana and all the listeners. We love you. All right. Thanks so much. We love you guys and we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.